Hey guys, how's it going? Hopefully my head's not cut off right here. Uh, so today's Saturday and it's a bright crisp morning. Birds are out chirping and uh, I got a little package in the mail and no it's not another Blade 350. Although I do love my Blade 350, I've gone over to the dark side. Um, basically what happened is I was so impressed with the Blade 350, the brushless motors, the speed, the power of this thing. Unbelievable compared to my WL Toy stuff, my um, Hubson X4s. I know that's smaller stuff, that's more toy based and this is a big jump. But once I got to something like this, this blade, it was, it was no going back. Um, so I will be giving away the V262 in a future video, um, just so you know. And I'll do a whole video on that and the rules and all that stuff of that. This thing impressed me so much, so much, I, and my son wanted to fly it so much and was always fighting me to fly it, whereas usually he's sitting over there in the corner with the, the V222, which is a great quadcopter, but he's ready for something like this too. So I figured I'd let him fly this, and uh, I would move on to something even bigger. And uh, since they fixed 90% of their issues, I got me a new Phantom. Now, I definitely would not get the original Phantom. Like I said, I would not spend the money for a flyaway vehicle, basically. So, this one is the one I would get. And uh, I'm glad I waited. And we'll see how it is compared to this one. Speed and stability and, and how much it can uh, really react. How smoothly it reacts. How fluid it is to your, to your control movements. So we're going to do a quick unboxing. This thing has a lot of stuff in it, I'm not going to lie. I did open it up to look at it real quick. That's as far as I got, though. You know, make sure there's no you know, damage from the shipping or whatever. So I did get the Phantom 2 uh, Spirit of Flight, which is a brand new, fully revised Phantom, not the Phantom 2 Vision. That one's the, uh, the old one with some improvements and a camera. I wanted the full new, latest and greatest version as I have a GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black, so um, it's compatible with the gimbal. Speaking of gimbals, of course I wouldn't buy it without the gimbal, so I got that Zeus uh, Zemus H3 2D gimbal that's made just for this, and it plugs right in. No more soldering, hacking into the main board, so this will plug right in, and then our controller has the actual control in the back there for the panning, for the tilt. So that's great. And if I was going to ever shoot from a chopper of any kind, I'm going to want a gimbal on there so it's super fluid uh, when you're flying around. It's not all over the place, you know. So without me yakking anymore, we're going to get right to this unboxing. And I'm going to show you what's in here because there's a lot, lot in here compared to, um, let's say, the blade. So I'm going to do a few comparisons make this unboxing a little bit different than everybody else's unboxing out there, which there aren't too many in the Phantom 2. Um, I imagine everybody's happy with their Phantom 1 or got the Vision when that came out, so they're not jumping on the bandwagon for a Phantom 2. So there's not too many of them out there. So I'm going to go through in detail uh, what, what actually comes with it, and then a few quick comparisons to the Blade, and then we'll do further ones out in the field in a future video, obviously. So we're going to unbox this. And it comes in a real nice, like, egg carton shell here. And the first thing I noticed about this thing, this thing's freaking heavy. I tell you, oh. You got it in here nice and tight. Put it aside. And this is really, like, professional packaging. It already impresses me, right? And then these little black pamphlet books right here are really professional looking too. And this is based, that this, this chopper is basically for, what it should be for, it's made for, is a professional photographer that really wants a stable platform and of course that gimbal for those awesome shots. They do all kinds of recording with these things, up, you know, real estate, all kinds of stuff. So, let's see what's inside here. I never went into here yet when I opened it the other day. 
And of course this has your, your stickers, blue, you got pink for the girls, and then you got blue. I think I'm using blue so it's different. I think all the original Phantoms were red. So we're going to use blue on mine. So they got stickers. I never really saw that before is how that was uh, explained. How they went on there, if it was part of it or you put it on yourself. So you got a quick start guide right here, which is really nice, what you really need to know. And then of course opens up to your actual quick start guide for the the first you know setup and all that stuff, the propellers and all that. And uh, the most important part, which is calibrating your compass. As uh, DJI says, it's it doesn't it may be manufactured somewhere else, whereas the magnetic north is upside down now, basically, in other words. So, um, it's very important to calibrate your compass, and they point that out in there also. Different languages, disclaimer, don't run into anybody and kill them. And then, uh, DJI Rewards Club. And yeah, that's about it in there. So, let's get to the important stuff, which is the actual quadcopter. Now, what I am going to say is that this thing was $869, which is what everybody's selling it for, and that's great. And um, where I bought it from was B&H from New York, and that was the, the gimbal, the Phantom 2, and then they actually gave me a charger and nickel metal batteries for the, the remote. So I didn't know that was, was even coming, so... That's nice to have. I got a bunch of them already, but it's nice to have new ones, fresh ones. And uh, these are different brands, so of course I'll know that these are for uh, this transmitter at all times. So they did give this little bonus add-in for the same price. So um, they do sell for $869 free shipping. So this place was the only place that would say if you order it now, it would come here. The other ones were like, ah, we'll get to it in one or two days, and then we'll ship it out. It's like, you know what? I'll go somewhere else, because everybody's selling for $869. So, uh, of course, you got your blades. You're black and you're silver, and these things are absolutely huge. Let's put them next to, let's move this over so we can get it on the camera. Let's put them next to, uh, let me get a razor blade so I don't bend these things up. Okay, I'm back. I got the uh, blades out of the packaging, and we're going to compare them to the Blade 350 blades. Let's see if you can see them like that. They're about an inch and three quarters longer, and they're absolutely huge. Look at the pitch on here. Right here, how it dips down so much, and that's really going to grab some air and provide some lift. Which is important because this thing is a lot heavier, I can tell you that already. And that's mainly due to that 5200 milliamp battery. This one has a 3200, I believe, milliamp battery. It's very small because it's a smaller chopper. Um, so we're going to pull this out and we're going to put this other stuff to the side. So there it is. Let's put the gimbal to the side too. Okay, so first thing you're going to see is that the um, this one sits a lot higher than that one. It's just a bigger overall um, um, chopper on here. So it doesn't seem to have the, the base, the width right here as this one. But it definitely stands a lot taller. Everything in the plastic seems a lot stronger. Uh, that's one of the things I was curious about. So this thing is a lot stronger. Whereas this one seems a lot weaker and thinner, you know, so it's lighter for the, the motors and all that stuff. This one's just really, it's, it's, it's as thick as it seems um, on, the, on the videos. So this one's going to be a lot more strong when it goes to a, you know, a crash, whereas mine already broke off. That was my fault I crashed it. And uh, I got a new body for it already, but still, this one, you can just tell, is a lot, lot thicker, so... I'll put those next to each other for a second here. Blades. Of course, you get an extra set of blades. A full set. And I don't know why, but everything comes in anti-static packaging. I don't know. What's up with that? 
This one is a um, screwdriver, flathead, and Phillips. You get a nifty little handle for it, too. It looks like anti static packaging, anyways. And then it simply inserts either side so you can work on it. It's got a nice handle to it. So we're going to take out the other box that's in there. There's a lot of boxes, lots of cables, lots of stuff in here compared to what comes in my other choppers. So it's got the mini USB to regular USB cable that comes with it, obviously. And that's so you can do uh, settings in here through the USB port, which is right here. And then there's also one in the bottom of the controller. Um, and the rest of this in here in the packaging is, oh, they got cords for different countries looks like. Interesting. Yeah, they got all kinds of adapters in here. Look at that weird plug, huh? And then that just feeds the power adapter here, which is the actual battery charger made just for this battery and it has a special plug in the end of it here like so and that'll stick right into the battery on here this plugs in just like a uh, um, just like a you know a, a laptop charger it's the same idea Get your cord your transformer and then this just sticks right into the battery Speaking of batteries, let's see if we can do it. This thing is just massive and it really sticks in here too. Not just the clips, but the actual tangs where it, it actually connects in right here. Oh man, they're nice tight fit, so shouldn't be no issues. And then this right here, these terminals right here, they just literally stick into the battery like this and then it just charges so it's like an external battery for a laptop almost looks like so that thing's absolutely huge 5200 milliamps and then you have uh, your CAN bus right here on the one leg and then you got your uh, your antenna and your GPS and everything on all the other legs and then right here, this one sticks out right here, that's for the gimbal. So uh, it's right all wired in and sticking out here. And then uh, it's a lot lighter now without that battery in it, but you can still see there's a lot to it in there. And uh, it's got that thick, thick plastic, so it's a very, very nice uh, quadcopter. Um, just feel how professional it is compared to um, this one. This one's just fine, like I said. I just wanted to go a little bit higher um, in power and, and stability, and then of course had that gimbal. So, and then of course, what else we got? You got your little wrench tool, and uh, to hold your motors while you're you're loosening the uh, blades on here. More anti-static stuff. And that just goes on here in these little grooves right here, like that. And then it holds the motor while you take the prop on and off. And then, of course, the controller, which I never really liked. Let's see what this is. And then, of course, the controller, which I never really liked. And uh, this is just a Red uh, wrap around on it to tell you how to fly it and what the stuff means on there. But it's pretty simple. It has has all your different switches on here for your uh, GPS mode, attitude mode, and all that stuff. And then the antenna looks, you know, pretty small, whatever compared to um, the one for the blade. I mean, look at the difference. So, but they say it goes to one kilometer. So, that's been, been verified also. And then the back here, there's an actual, uh, get this off on here a little bit. 
And the back here, it's so cool. On the back here, there's an actual like little sweeper arm here. It's got little grippers for your finger. And you can pan the gimbal up and down your camera. So that's nice to be able to control the actual tilt of the camera. That's really, really cool. And besides that, it's pretty basic, but they say it's really, really reliable. And then, of course, the USB port's down here for this, so you can do parameters, I guess, and, and of course, firmware updates as they come out. But this red banding, I wasn't clear on either, and uh, now I got it in my hands, I can see it's just the, the first uh, instructions. And then they give you a little tag on here, which gives you all the different uh, modes for the flashing LED lights on here and stuff, so you can see what the, uh, all the indications mean, solid, red, blinking green, all that stuff. So you have a quick reference because there is so many variables to this. So, and the sticks on here feel really good. What's different on this one is that um, bolt sticks self-center, whereas this one for the throttle, it just sticks wherever you put it at. You see on this one, it'll just this one's a throttle, it'll just stick wherever you put it at. Whereas these ones are self-centering. So that's something a little bit different. And I never really, really liked the uh, white on here. It's, everything's so white. So uh, I'm sure they got overlays for this or stickers or something like that to make it look a little bit better. Okay, so for these blades right here, there's silver ones and there's black ones for the tips right here. And that matches uh, the tips of these motors on here. So these are self-tightening. And the black ones have black dots at the very tip up here. And then, of course, right here in the arm, there's the rotation of what they should be. See, so it's matched with the rotation arrows on here to the one on the actual arm. So this one matches up with this one. And you're supposed to be able to just go like this till the motor starts moving and that's it. You never have to touch them again because they're self-tightening. Um, it's just the way they are. I had to get a little bit tight like that with my hand. I wouldn't go as far as the wrench and throw your blades in the ground. And then here's a black one. We'll find the black dots and they'll match up the arrows again on this one. And this one goes right here. There it is. And they say that's all you have to do is just that. No, no wrenches or nothing. So, uh, good. Good. And then we'll get the other two on there. Make sure they match up as well. Now what I find curious is just how huge these blades are, right? So look at, look how close they come. Whereas these ones, hopefully you're able to see this. I mean, these ones got, you know, almost two inches probably. This one, maybe a half an inch, maybe five eighths. So these are very close. Okay, so we're gonna charge this puppy up so that maybe we can go fly it at least a little bit today and get some first flight video so we can see just how awesome it is or isn't and if it's worth the bump up in price compared to a Blade 350. Um, what I'll be very interested in testing out today because up until now I've only had uh, cheapy cameras on my quadcopters or the ones that came with them and let's just say they're horrible quality compared to let's say a um, uh, GoPro. So this is the first time I'd be able to put a GoPro on a quad and now I got a gimbal too so it should be pretty awesome video no matter what's going on and um, very anxious to get this thing set up. So here's the anti-vibration mount which I feel is very very high quality. It's metal with the rubber boots on here you could see them. The, the vibration isolators on here this is metal and it just seems, ah, oh, it's just a lot, you know, it's aluminum and it's just strong and it's just machined really well. And then here's the piece that actually holds the GoPro, it goes through the center of it. 
And then you got different colored ones on here for the vibration mount. And they got different numbers on them. And they're all softer or harder, it seems. These white ones being really soft. And then, of course, you have a bunch of screws mounted up. And then these ones go through these retainers right here with the disc. They go through this mount on here to the other side so that in case this thing separates from that rubber mount on there, it'll actually um, you know, not fall out of the sky. So these retain that to that. And then the main event here is this sucker. This is the actual gimbal. And this thing is unbelievable. It's a little floppy right now, it's just not powered up. But it's got the port right here to plug into your um, your Phantom, the wire that's coming out of it. And then you got multiple servos on here, so it can adjust either your tilt, and then of course make sure it's steady, so when your chopper's all over the place, this thing is absolutely steady. And then it plugs into your GoPro right here. There's the, on the back of your GoPro. And that'll mount up to that also. So this thing will be absolutely awesome. I can't wait to go try this and to see how fluid it is. And then this vibration mount should be quite awesome too from what I've seen um, where it gives you jello free video. So uh, it's a lot of assembly, especially with this uh, little mount on here. I want to make sure you get everything right, put the Loctite in there and all that stuff. So. Um, one thing I did note uh, when I came across information is these blades right here, don't go putting Loctite on them and then tightening them down with a wrench and all that. Um, these ones, they say to just spin them on and from that point on, when they're flying, but literally the whole time they're flying, they're self-locking because of the direction of the threads and the direction the blades are flying. Uh, spinning. So do not put Loctite on so that negates the fact that it can move to self-lock. So that's one thing I can tell you so far. This thing is quite heavy. Let me see like, how heavy it is compared to this one. Yeah, it's, it's quite a bit heavier. So there's going to be lots of videos comparing this one to this one because below this is the blade. The Walkera has too many problems, is too slow to respond, too many uh, setup problems, whereas this one is its own beast, I guess you could say, because it's so advanced and professional and all that stuff, whereas this one would be the next step up if I can get out of those small quads. So um, this one still has tons and tons of power though. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, do some lift offs and all that stuff and then uh, how well they can handle a hold on GPS and of course in the same windy situations. And then of course I'm gonna do a return to homes to see who can home in on, you know, hone in on the freaking on the the markers, you know, better. In the same conditions, of course. So I mean a lot of comparisons to really tell you guys if it's worth it going to um, from the 350 to this or just going from your small stuff and jump into this and skip this all together. So I'm going to go start charging the battery and then I'll make sure I finalize installation of all these pieces on here, get my GoPro charged up, get the gimbal on there and uh, we're going to get this thing fully, fully assembled so we can go out and get those uh, uh, first flight videos. Right now it's probably, let's say it's getting sunny out it looks like. Um, it should have been about 47 today. It feels like it's 20 out. So maybe by now it um, has gotten to be you know five ten miles an hour winds and uh, you know 40 some degrees. So it's tolerable to go out there because I really want to try this thing out. See how much quieter it is or louder. All kinds of stuff. What I'm really interested in as they say it's so fluid in its movement. It really responds so perfectly. It's so powerful and so the the instruments on here that sense everything are so uh, they're so well built let's just say so we're really I've flown the blade a lot 
So I will be able to say yeah or no. Big difference, no. So I'm gonna go charge it up and then uh, I'm gonna do a first flight video with the GoPro on board. So look out for that.